Hello and welcome back to another Chemistry Academy video. In this video we're going to be looking at naming carbon-based molecules that you learn about in the higher chemistry course. So I've made this sort of summary table here to try and help you with um, when you look at a molecule or present with a molecule working out what type of molecule it is and then therefore what the name ending would be um, and then vice versa if you're given the name of a molecule based on the ending of the name what type of molecule is it. So these are all the common functional groups that are within the organic or carbon-based molecules that we tend to come across. Um, here we've got the type of molecule that they all are and then what their name ending will be. The ester is slightly different because it's got like a two-part name and so it's something ile, something anoate. But hopefully this summary table will help you when it comes to naming and identifying types of molecules. Um, I'm not going to go through it because it's pretty self-explanatory, so we're just going to get started on naming some molecules. Okay, so we've got four molecules on the board here and we're going to name all of them. Now, when we're going to name them, we need to first of all identify what type of molecule they are so that we can then identify what their name ending is going to be. So if we look at this first molecule here, it's got an OH hydroxyl group on it, which is characteristic for an alcohol. So that means that the name of this molecule is going to end in all. Okay, and that's just based on the fact that it's got a hydroxyl group, so it makes it an alcohol. Now, what we need to do is find the longest chain of carbons. So we've got one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. So the maximum number we can get is four. So I'm just going to pick this one here. If you forget the prefixes for numbers of carbons, you can check them up in the melting and boiling points of organic compounds page in the data booklet. I think it's page 12, but don't quote me on that. And you would find that the prefix for four carbons is butte. So this is a butanol. And we need to leave a gap to put the hydroxyl group number location. So when it comes to numbering the carbon chain that we've just identified, we need to make sure we number from the end closest to where the functional group is. So the functional group always takes priority, even if there's branches on it. So this would be carbon one, because it's closest to the functional group, two, three, four. So our hydroxyl groups on carbon one, which makes this a butan one all. And now we've got this methyl group here that we need to add in to the name. So it is a methyl group because it's got one carbon in it. So it would be methyl, butan one all and then we need to add in the number location for the branch and it's on carbon three we can't renumber the chain so i know that we would always want to try and get the lowest number possible but once you've numbered for the functional group that takes priority you can't just switch it around and start numbering from the other side again just to get a more branch number so if the branch number ends up higher because of where the functional group is that's fine so it will be three methyl butan one all for that molecule. This molecule here, the functional group on it is a carboxyl group, which is characteristic for a carboxylic acid, which means the name ending would be anoic acid. Okay, so now we just need to work out the prefix for the longest chain of carbons. So we can do one, two, three, or one, two, three, or one, two, three, always check in L-shaped directions. The longest chain of carbons has to include the functional group as well as the other thing, so it had to, has to contain this carboxyl group. So if we just pick this middle one again as our longest chain of three, so the prefix for three carbons is prop, so this is a propanoic acid. You don't need to put a number in for the carboxylic acid because the carboxyl group can only ever go on carbon one. Um, so it can only ever go in the end of the chain, so you never need a number for that one. Again, we number from the end closest to where the, hydro uh, the functional group is, so this would be carbon 1, 2, 3. And this time we've got two methyl groups here. Now they are separate, which is why the drawing the circles around them helps, it helps you see that they are separate branches. So both of them are methyl branches because they've got one carbon, but because we've got two of them we need to put a dye in front of the methyl because di means two. So we've got dimethyl propanoic acid. 
and now we need the number location for both of the branches. So even though they're both on carbon 2, we need to write the number 2 twice because we don't want any ambiguity. We don't want people not knowing that they're both on carbon 2. So 2,2-dimethyl propanoic acid would be the name for this one. We go down to our third molecule down here. So the functional group this time is a carbonyl, not to be confused with a carboxyl, which has got the OH here. This is a carbonyl and it's a carbonyl at the end of a carbon chain, which means it's, this molecule is an aldehyde. Molecules that are aldehydes have name endings al. So again, we find the longest chain of carbons, including the functional group. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. So the longest chain we can get is a five. So I'll just pick this straight chain of five. It's the easiest one. The prefix for five carbons is pent. And so it'd be a pentanal. And because for an aldehyde, the functional group's always at the end of the chain, because that's what makes it an aldehyde, is the carbonyl groups at the end, you don't ever need a number. Okay, so for aldehydes and carboxylic acids, you don't need the number for the functional group location. So if we number the carbon chain closest to where the functional group is, one, two, three, four, and five, then again, we've got two methyl groups. So it would still be, it would be dimethyl again for the two methyl groups. However, they're not on the same numbers um, as each other this time. So this time our numbers would be two and four because this one's on carbon two, this one's on carbon four. So it'd be two comma four dash dimethyl pentanal. And then the last one we're going to do here. So we've got again another carbonyl group, CO, uh, but this time it's in the middle of the carbon chain, which makes this molecule a ketone. The name ending for a ketone is own, so we know the name of end of the name of this one. If we find the longest chain of carbons, now most people would go one, two, three, four, five, but like I said, don't forget to check an L shape. So there's actually a carbon down here that's connected, but it's just drawn in a different way rather than straight across. So that's actually got a longest chain of one, two, three, four, five, six. So that carbon there is actually also included in the longest chain, okay? This means that it's a hexanone, but because with the ketone you can have the carbonyl in different locations in the middle, we need to put a number in for where it is. So again, we number from the end closest to where the functional group is, five and then six. So this is a hexantuone. We don't have any carbon branches this time because this one that looked like it was a branch to start with is actually in the longest carbon chain. So that's all those molecules named. So hopefully by looking at what type of molecule it is first, identifying the functional group that's in it, that'll give you the name ending and then you just follow the systematic naming rules from then on, then on um, based on the longest chain of carbons and then how many branches there are and where the branches are. So that's my top tips for naming organic molecules for the higher chemistry course. If you find this video useful, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Chemistry Academy.